This is my, my barn. It, it's about 300 years old. Obviously the wood on here is not. The tile, I've re-roofed it, they're the original tiles. And uh, they, they would be made in the village, peg tiles. Um, it was a saw pit, a saw for sawing up wood. And I'm converting it to an Airbnb. Um, hempcrete, wood fibre, all natural materials. So tell us about the wood on the outside again. Please. Oh, the wood is large. It was cut from a local estate just four miles from here. And it's a very uh, resinous softwood, so it lasts a long time. You don't need to treat it with anything. You just put it up like this and that's it. This is beautiful. It's yeah. so artistic. It's a lovely colour. It's beautiful colour, but it will change colour over time, I would think. Yeah, it will go grey and eventually really dark grey. Um, I'm toying with the idea of putting an oil on it, which inhibits the UV from turning, changing the colour, but it still will change colour eventually. All right, and the base is the original base. It it's looks like brick. brickwork. Yeah, I've just repointed it, line pointing. And they're handmade bricks. They would have been made here on site. So there was a saw put in there, a big hole, and they put a tree across, and somebody's under the tree holding a saw, and somebody's on the top holding the other bit of the saw. That's where you get the underdog and the top dog, and they saw the tree up. <laughs> and when they dug the hole, they would have made those bricks here, and they would have made a kiln somewhere here just with the bricks and burnt them here. And I've got some bricks with little cat footprints in where a cat's walked across them as they're drying. And Sweet. So yeah, they're, they're wood fired. They're really, really old. And I didn't realize how old this building was until I started taking it apart. How, do, how did you detect the age then? We found, when I took the floor up, there was a concrete floor and I found the saw pit. I, I dug out all the rubble that we put in. We found the edges of the saw pit. I found loads of stuff to do with saw pits. And that house across the road is 1624. And that was the Wheelwright's house. And every Wheelwright had a saw pit. So it's like the two and two go in hand. So they must've been together. Or 1650 something. The other one's 1624. So, um, and then how is this heated? What are you it's not yet, using? But it's gonna be, You're going to. It's, it's gonna. It's got. A, it's already got a gas supply, so it's just gonna have gas heating, but and a wood burner. But it's not gonna need a lot of heating. It's gonna be really well. It's really well insulated. And in the insulation is the hemp wool. So in the roof, I've got hemp clay and cork, and in the walls is wood fiber and hemp block. Wood fiber. Wood fiber. It's the one I was talking about earlier. The board that's right. totally grooved. And hemp block. Yeah. So we'll go inside and have a look at that. Your hemp block. Okay. Let's go inside yeah. and see. And it's got a hemp floor as well. Oh. Hemp free floor. Oh, oh, oh. We'll just have to watch the step on the way down. Let's see. Full of junk at the minute because I've been out, been away building somewhere else. Oh, look at this, the floor. So, will you leave this or put this a coating? Have, I've got a cedar tree that was felled that fell down on a local estate, and I've had it planked up so the planks will screw straight to this wood, so it'll be a solid cedar floor, cedar wood floor. Um, so why put the hemp block? Oh, insulation, floor insulation. Oh, floor insulation. Yeah. So there's a foot of insulation in the floor, a foot in the walls, and almost a foot in the roof. So that you can see up there is the hemp and clay which I sprayed. So I put I put cardboard underneath those laths, I stapled in cardboard, and sprayed the hemp and clay from the top when I, when I took the roof off. And mm. so in here I'll just plaster between the beams, so you'll be able to see all the beams. And you'll plaster it with? Clay, clay plaster. These are all my samples of clay plaster, all different colors I'm trying out. These are beautiful. And they're just colored with the sand, so they're different colored sands. Oh, wait a minute, the sand came in this color? This. Oh no, that's, a, that's a gray clay and a white sand. That's an orange clay and a white sand. That's a, a white clay with a red sand. But I'm not using pigments, basically. It's all natural, the clays and the sands. So I'll just use whatever I can to make the colour. And they're here in the UK. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And then, so that wall, I've done the hemp blocks already. So you can see the old timber. I'm keeping all the timbers. That's just where the carts, the wood used to come in. So the trees would, that used to be a door. 
So that was a doorway and there was nothing here. There was a, there was a sort of hayloft type thing and the trees would come in there was a big pit and they, this was the saw they'd use, this type of saw. So somebody's in the pit holding this and they're called the underdog because they're getting all the sawdust falling them. And then the top dog would hold the bit on, he'd stand on the log and they'd cut it up. And um, uh, yeah, and then once they cut it up, they'd plank it and they'd, there's a window up there. And then obviously it's a new window, but it's original opening. And then they'd lie them between these two trusses. That's why the, these trusses are very strange. I've never seen them like this before, but it was so they could put the wood through and they'd just store the planks up there to dry. Isn't it interesting how this is curved? Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. lovely, isn't it? Yeah, I it's love, lovely. I love this place. It used to be my workshop. This is absolutely beautiful. It just has so much character. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And these are your hemp bricks. These, yeah, these are going to be right across the inside. So, oh, you can see it here. So these are going to be extra insulation. So they'll get laid across the whole, whole of this and then I'll curve them into the old beams so you can still see the old beams. So what is on there now? That's the wood fibre. That's made from wood, pulped up wood. And it comes in boards and there's a tongue and groove joint in there so it's good for air tightness. Normally you don't put it between the studs, you just put it on the outside, but I, I over ordered, so I put it in between as well. Interesting. It's a really good product that's made in Germany and that locks up 140 kilograms of carbon per cubic meter. There's loads. There's a lot. Yeah. Yes. Really good, really good thing. But on its own, it's just an insulator, but but couple it with the with the hempcrete and you've got thermal mass and all the moisture absorption and the moisture buffering and all that. So together they work really well. Uh, yeah. So where will the bathroom be? Where and So you Will this be two stories then? Yeah, so there's one set of stairs that goes up to this bedroom. All right. Up there. And then there's one set of stairs here that goes to that bedroom. And then there's a bathroom in there and a kitchen in there. And this is like an open plan. This will have a table and behind the stairs will be like a little snug. And I'll probably put a wood burner in the corner down there. So underneath here, the underneath the hemp. Mm -hmm. there's, the hemp's laid on lime mortar. And then under the blocks is about 10 inches of this stuff, what is which that? is called um, recycled foam glass or glass foam. So oh, it's I've recycled glass. These are this this brand is actually car windscreens, and they heat them up and blow air through them, and they're an insulator. But they, once you compact them, they're solid. You can build off them. So you you spread them out, compact them down, and then you can they're a structure but they're also insulation and they're also a, a damp proof membrane because water doesn't wick up through it. Is it really glass though? Yeah, is it's it... glass, that's glass. Oh my goodness, that's... Yeah, this is a block of it, you can buy it in blocks as well. And where are they from, where is it made? I think it's Germany. Yeah, clever those Germans, aren't they? Yeah, they are, aren't they clever? <laughs> they're very smart, very yeah. resourceful, just like you Brits. Yeah. It's really popular now, people are using it everywhere. It's I've really, it's I've a really good it. product. Yeah. Because it's, it doesn't allow moisture up through it, so you don't need a plastic membrane, and it's insulating and it's structural. Um, so it's like really good for natural buildings. Insulating, structural, and and it's your damp-proof membrane. So. But you want it? It's basically just for the base. Yeah, and then you build. You can put a screed on it, an earth screed or a lime screed, or I've just laid the block straight on it. And I've only put, normally you wouldn't really have the timbers in, but I put them in because I want to screw a hard, a wooden floor down. Right. Most people have like a floating floor or something like that, but I wanted a solid floor. So, yeah. Lovely. I've just got to get on with it, really. <laughs> so that one in my right hand is a fine hemp for plastering. So that's made up in Yorkshire, Nick Vos Hull Valley Hemp. So you can use that for your plaster or mortar. You can use, make, mix that with lime to make a good mortar for the hemp blocks, an insulating mortar. And then that one next to it is the building hemp. This one is um, from France. So obviously less fibre and it's um, bigger, bigger bits.
right. A playhouse on top of a rabbit hutch. Yeah. And then what did you do? You I, the boss in the rabbit hutch it goes underground and there's a underground tunnels where they sleep. <laughs> Arthur and I made it. You and your son. Yeah. Oh I love it. And this I... is my lockdown project. Actually everything from here, this flower bed that way, that was all lockdown. All the beds, the greenhouse, the flower bed. Where did you make your greenhouse from? What were they? Oh, it was one that was being, there was a house being knocked down. Where we just went in Flaunden, a house was being knocked right. down and they had the greenhouse for free on, if free to collect us. So I just went and picked it up. Smart you. Smart so how is it that you got involved in with the Margent Farms? Well, the, I know, knew the architect, Paloma Gormley, she's a brilliant architect um, or designer. She, uh, she came to my house when I was building my house and said, how do you, how would you make a panel if you were to make a panel? So you built your whole home in hempcrete? Yeah, but not in panels. I built it on okay. site and I said, well, I'd build it exactly like I'm building my house, but I would just make it in panels. So, um, so that we, and I was working at HG Matthews Brickworks at the time. So I said, well, we can make them for you at the Brickworks. Um, the bricks or the panels? The panels, we'll make the panels. So you at, made the panels there? Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't see any panels when I was there. Oh no, it was the one off. We didn't. We only made them for that. Okay. So there's a the, the builder, Oscar Cooper. We got him to make the panels. We got him to make the timber cassettes, like we called them cassettes. They're like, like boxes. So he made the timber frame, but in sections. Okay. So he came to Brickworks, made the timber frame in sections. I've got pictures of it all I can share with you. I would love that. Thank and you. then we made the hempcrete, <clears throat> filled it with hempcrete. We'd put all the, the electric conduits and stuff in, filled it with hempcrete, put them in the drying, uh, left them out for 21 days, then put them in the drying room just to finish drying. The whole house fit in one drying room at HG Matthews and forklifted it in and oh panels was stacked God. up. Uh, and then we took it to site and Oscar put it up in about five days, I think, the hempcrete bit. And we made it in the factory, we made it in like, so he took 10 days to make the timber cassettes. He set up this really good jig where he, you know, it was really right. bang, 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 bang. And then we did the hempcrete in like four days. They took 21 days to dry. Uh, and then they went to site and were up in five days.